Hello, my friends. Welcome to a discussion of experiential learning. And in this video, we will provide an introduction uh, to experiential learning. And of course, I want you to keep in mind that adults use their experiences to explain their present. Uh, how do we define experiential learning? Well, that's kind of interesting. Experiential learning is a general term referring to learning from experience. Another way of saying that is that it is the process of drawing meaning from experience. In this diagram, we have uh, children and we have an adult. Now, I want you to keep in mind that in many of the theories that we've looked at, such as Piaget and we've looked at Malcolm Knowles with andragogy, we have observed that children learn differently than adults. Children tend to be very much analytical learners, while it might be argued that adults are experiential learners. Adults learn from their experiences. In other words, adults make sense of their present experiences by drawing upon their past experiences and by interpreting them. Now, in this uh, little video portion, we're going to examine Nob's, Kolb's model for experiential learning, which starts with concrete experience and then moves into reflective observation. After a reflective observation, follows abstract conceptualization. After abstract conceptualization, follows active experiment. And active experiment then, of course, moves back into concrete experience. Now, what we see from this model is that the experience occurs, and the experience is reflected upon. And that reflection generates abstract opinions being formed about the experiences, values or judgments are made, and based upon those judgments, more experiment is done, and that experiment then impacts continued concrete experience. Now, uh, each of these types or areas that uh, Kolb has identified really identifies for us a type of learner. Activists prefer doing and experiencing where uh, reflectors enjoy observing and reflecting. Uh, you certainly know those type learners who just get such a kick out of watching something happen and they'll reflect on it and regurgitate it over and over and over and analyze it and all of that. As opposed to the activist, then we have the reflector. Beyond the reflector, we have the theorist who wants to look for reasons, wants to draw meaning out of the experience and the reflection that has taken place. And then, of course, we move to the pragmatist who likes to try ideas that work, active experimentation. So we, in fact, have four types of learners, activist, reflectors, theorist, and the pragmatist. Now, there are two ways of knowing that we find in this model. The first of those is apprehension, which is gained by direct experience. And the next of those is comprehension, which comes more as a result of the, the, the relationship between reflection and conceptualization. Apprehension, of course, comes from the experience, uh, primarily then drawing upon active experiment and a little bit reflection. Apprehension versus comprehension. Comprehension comes by reflecting about the, uh, the uh, uh, experience that you've had and then taking that experience and drawing it into and the theories or ideas or, or formulations of why, what that experience means. Uh, there are two ways of transforming knowledge which can be drawn from this, uh, this model. The first of those is connotation, which is understanding by thinking. And the next of those is denotation, which is understanding by using. By thinking, connotation, by denotation, by using. Now, in this model, there are actually four kinds of knowledge as well. Between concrete experience and reflective observation, we have divergent knowledge. Divergent knowledge might be explained kind of like a, uh, developing a toolkit, a history of, of experience, uh, in order that you might use that toolkit or history of experience to make future decisions. So we have divergent knowledge. We have assimilative knowledge. Assimilative knowledge is, is based on uh, reflecting upon that toolkit and upon that experience to try to move forward and draw meaning from it. We have convergent knowledge. 
Convergent knowledge as opposed to divergent knowledge. Divergent is the history. Con convergent knowledge is is uh, how that history pieces together. What are the what are the uh, overlapping themes that develop within that history of knowledge? And the last of those is accommodating. In my active experience, what can I do to be more successful to bring about the things that I want to bring about? Again, I want to thank you very much for your patronage. I've enjoyed sharing with you an introduction to Kolb's experiential learning. Uh, I am reminded that adults are very much experiential learners. Just in closing, I want to point out to you that in, early I, in the development of early IQ theory, there were many people that uh, uh, made rash judgments about who is more intelligent than whom. And of course, you know, the test was developed by white middle class northern males. So if you were a white middle class northern male of the time, you likely did well on it. And if you weren't a white middle class northern male, you didn't do as well. And that brought about a lot of stereotypes of, of who is intelligent and who isn't intelligent. Of course, we now know the bias underlying many of the tests, the fallacies in that argument, which destroy these stereotypes. But one of the stereotypes that was that emerged was that of adults uh, being less intelligent, older adults being less intelligent than younger adults. I think this idea was certainly perpetuated by teenagers. Well, I, I laugh about that theory because the it, an IQ test measures and those IQ tests measured analytic learning, while we now know that uh, it is about experiential learning, and that's how adults learn. I want to thank you for your attention, and uh, may the odds be ever in your favor, unless, of course, we're in the same event that it's ever man for himself.